Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. The first rule of Terran warfare. What is the first rule of Terran warfare? Nah, not your rule for waging war against Terrans. The Terrans' first rule of warfare. Everyone knows yours, mister. Screams it out from the skies. I don't care if you are offended by the Terran nickname for your people. It sucks, because it's accurate. You're getting off track, but that's my point. It doesn't matter if you're the first rule is fight for honor, kill all non-believers, or uh, resistance is futile. You ask for my advice, and I'll give it to you. What is the first rule of Terran warfare? No, not even close. And now you're just embarrassing yourself. The first rule of Terran warfare is... They lose. Yes, that's it. You're not getting it. Look, uh, what does every other race's war doctrine center around? I'll answer just to save us both some time and headache. It's always about victory. Winning, being victorious, forcing surrender, and the variety of other things after victory. They all assume and expect victory. Of course it makes sense to you. You're like the rest of them, which is why everyone who has fought the Terrans... Has lost. And the Garukti have a better tech than you. And when was the last time you heard about them, hmm? Because the Terrans defeated them. Look, I'll explain it to you. But you actually have to listen to me. The Terrans do not care about winning. They don't care about victory. They don't care about honor, glory, or any of that crap. The only thing they care about is making sure their opponent gets none of that. They don't care. That's my fecking point. They don't care how many die. They don't care how they look or what their descendants may think of them. So long as you don't win, they haven't lost. Which means they will have descendants to think of them. Yeah, you'd think that if you lose, that they've won. But they've found ways to make sure that everyone loses. Think of that one for a bit. Look, go read the Terrans' histories and reports in war. They're very open with it all. You read that, actually read it, and still want to fight them, then, then come back to me and I'll give you the advice and information you ask for. If you listen to that, then you should be able to leave some descendants to learn from your example. End of story. Story number two. Torchbearers, written by number one American. Humanity has looked to the stars ever since the first man lit to fire. Our solar system and space beyond has been a subject of fascination for generations. It's what put the first man on the moon, sent rovers to Mars, and probes to nearly every celestial body in our solar system. Within every human being is an explorer waiting to be let out. We looked at our solar system and said, That's our future. But one question always remained. Are we alone in this galaxy? Many speculate that we in fact are alone. Others argue that it is impossible for us to be alone. But deep down, everyone wanted to know the answer. When the first moon base was established, it was seen as a new door for humanity. We had taken our first baby steps into our home, and had settled in a place once thought inhospitable. It wasn't until five years after the lunar colony was established that an answer would finally reveal itself. We were not alone. An alien facility was discovered deep underneath the surface of the moon, not two miles from the colony. All of the major nations of Earth came together. America, Russia, and China set aside differences and under one name sent teams down to investigate. No one knows how it went undiscovered for so long, but it was here, hidden in plain sight, when explorers ventured into the sprawling complex. What they saw was astonishing. Farther inside the depictions of kings and historical battles, such as Hastings and Agincourt. Famous paintings and sculptures, perfectly preserved, were sat beside depictions of those of the ancient countries and peoples who had produced them. The writing of the alien civilization was finally deciphered, and, to our astonishment, they'd been studying us. All of our achievements and setbacks were listed out. They talked of us as if we were children who needed guidance, 
who needed protection. While smaller than hoped, this discovery once again lit a fire inside every human. Although this discovery led to more questions. Where are they now? Humanity had formed under one flag, the United Earth Government, or UEG for short. Renewed efforts in communication picked up. We constantly sent out signals into space, but to no avail. We asked again, when was everyone? Mars was our next home, and unlike our lunar colony, this was to be the start of a new home for humanity. Five settlements were erected, each one housed hundreds of people. This was the beginning of humanity's conquest to settle the stars. However, another discovery was made deep under the sands of Mars. We were excited. We hoped to learn more from what we had assumed were our friends. But when we delved into these ancient ruins, what we found shocked us more than the first discovery. This complex was different from the other. Not in function, but by who built it. The architecture and language are vastly different from the first, and on top of that, this building was even older. These aliens talked of ancient Rome, even having a copy of the sculptures of Augustus. These aliens had it recorded at the construction of the pyramids in Egypt. Species long extinct were alive in vats of green liquid. All of this was shocking. Not one, but two alien species were out there. But that just asked another question. Why are they ignoring us? It wasn't until we deciphered the language of this new species that we learn. Videos of a space battle between what we assumed were the ships belonging to the species and the ships of another species. What we thought was a victory for our friends turned out to be much more. They were protecting us, or protecting Earth. They talked about how we couldn't be discovered, how us remaining a secret was important for the future of the galaxy. We were the last hope to bring light to a dark galaxy. Every species that came to Sol was to protect us as we evolved, and guide us from the shadows, but to not get directly involved. All signals sent out of our solar system were immediately stopped, and politicians debated daily as to what this meant. Thanks to the technology that we had found in the observatories, we sent more powerful probes to each celestial body. And to our astonishment and horror, dozens and dozens of satellites and observatories littered every planet in our system. All pointed at Earth, and each one of them another civilization that was older than the last. Each spoke of a growing danger, a threat that will wipe out all life in the galaxy unless it was stopped. One observatory was on an asteroid. We discovered Earth was seeded with life by the first species. This species spoke about how the galaxy was full of life, how hundreds of civilizations lived in peace and prosperity. But some outside force invaded, and as the galaxy burnt, the ruling government had decided not all life should cease to exist. That our little planet in a system that was out of the way was chosen to be the new cradle for the galactic civilization. Each satellite and observatory spoke of a time in humanity's past. Each one showed just how we were influenced by alien civilizations. We talked about in high regard. They were proud of what we were becoming. We learned much from our benefactors. New technology that would help us reach distant stars and how to effectively terraform a planet. Regardless of what waited for us, we were ready. Each civilization had a mission to watch us and protect us. We don't know why they chose us, why every other race had decided to go along with it, but it was clear that we were the children of a long extinct civilization. Of Pluto, an observatory spoke of how we were the last species. No more would come naturally after us. The galaxy had got dark. Only our solar system was the spark that could ignite life and push back against the darkness. In this facility, however, was a message for us. To our children, we regret to inform you that we have failed. You are the last. You carry the torch now. We hope you have learned what you could from us. From the danger others galaxy will no doubt bring but it is up to you to see life back into the dark galaxy. Do what we did and nurture and protect them. Guide them 
from the shadows and do not let the darkness consume them. The information we give to you is the work of billions of years of failures to push back the darkness that slowly but surely consumes us all. We have given you all we could, all of our knowledge on how to see life back into the galaxy and push back the darkness. We were too slow to figure it out. But you have been engineered to fight this threat, to bring light back to the galaxy. You are our last hope. With that final message, we as humans worked tirelessly to build fleets of warships and colony ships. We would colonize this galaxy with not just our people, but the building blocks to start life on distant worlds. We would observe quietly, and we hoped to greet our children if they were to leave their planet. But if we failed... We would make sure that our children were ready. Our war fleets, accompanied by colony ships, jumped out and spread ourselves in the dark galaxy to once again bring light back to it. End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astraea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Bucks. And that, my friends, Thank concludes you this much. video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.